If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello and welcome once again to Vacation Rental Success and spring is here. It really, really is. Not only is the snow melting and the sun shining, but the uh, bookings are just pouring in. It's just, it's almost as though in this part of the world that everybody's come out of hibernation and has now suddenly realised that we're only a couple of months away from summer and you'd better get booking now or they are going to miss out. And in fact, we have so many properties that are now fully booked for the summer. You know, some people are miss they, they have already missed out. But we are at the uh, Cottage Life show uh, this weekend and in Toronto. And we usually find that we will talk to a ton of new owners. And after the show, we'll be going out to see all these new properties. And, uh, and we'll be... Um, We'll be taking a, a lot more on, I, I fully expect, over the next couple of months. And that, this is the fun part of the job. I really, really enjoy going out and looking at properties and talking with very, very motivated owners. And, you know, things have changed over the past few years. And I know when we first started this business, there was a little bit of desperation in there. You know, somebody wanted to put their property with us and it was just like, yes, yes, we'll have it. Really without um, without really looking at the property overall and what its attraction and appeal would be to guests. So we've become extremely selective in the past few years and probably turned down more properties than we take on because it's just, A, it's not fair to our rental guests to offer them anything that is subpar. Um, Secondly, even even with a rental agency, we need to have owners who have a philosophy of hospitality and understand that there is more to the business than just just opening up their property for rental and raking in the money. We're, We're very fortunate. We have such a lot of fabulous owners that are registered onto our rental program. And we, uh, we, we spend a lot of time you know, talking with them and many of them don't want to be hands-on. They don't want to really speak to the rental guests or, or be involved in the marketing process. I mean, that after all, that's why they pay commission to us. But we still need to make sure that the property is going to be fully prepared for their guests when they arrive. And it could be a caretaker or a cleaner who does that preparation and that is the the owner's job. In fact, my business partner, Craig, says, you know, for a property owner, their number one job and probably their only job is to make sure the property is beautifully presented and ready for guests when they arrive and, and make it welcoming. A lot of them have cleaners and caretakers that, that look after their properties, just like I do. And I have trained my caretaker into understanding what I expect um, my guests to find when they arrive. So, so she is a nitpicker extraordinaire. You know, she if 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 something's not quite right, if there's a chip in a plate, um, she wants it out of the cupboard and she wants it replaced. Always ten wine glasses. If one's been broken the week before, that that tenth glass must be there. I mean, we we accommodate usually around six to eight people. And a lot of them are children, but no, no. She says we've got the ten glasses; they've got to be ten. And it's it's she doesn't she doesn't want anything out of place. So she's an absolute gem. Um, whoever buys my cottages inherits her as well. So lucky folks they are, um, because I'm not allowing her to go anywhere else. You know, let's moving on to today's guest. It was really really interesting that um, I saw this article by today's guest in the Phoenix New Times, you know, sometime last year. And it was called How to Bake in a Vacation Rental. This was a guest who'd gone to a vacation rental and she was also, she's also a chef. She's a pastry chef. And the 
topic of the article was it was about in really what's in the kitchen and that really uh inspired me to to have Rachel on the show so I could ask her the questions that all owners need to be asking what do cooks want to have in their vacation rental kitchens because you know I know from way way back when I bought my first property I I went to Walmart and I equipped my kitchen without really thinking, with probably the cheapest stuff I could find. You know, after all, it was just for the rental. And I was put straight very shortly afterwards by a friend of uh, a friend of the family who is a celebrity chef. And he stayed at the cottage and gave me all sorts of tips on what he would expect to to find in a property. I thought this was this was great to get this chance to talk to uh, to talk to Rachel Miller and to find out what her take on it is, and uh, and also to ask her a little bit about her pastry business. So without further ado, let's move on to our interview. So it's an absolute delight to have with me Rachel Miller. And Rachel is the author of the blog called Croissant in the City, which she, with the tagline, Adventures of an Edacious Pastry Chef. And I have to admit, I have just been online to look up to see what edacious means. And I know now that it means devoted to eating. And um, uh, Rachel is uh, also, the runs a pastry business called Pistol Whipped Pastry, which sounds absolutely fas- fascinating. We're going to be asking her about that and also asking her about her experiences at vacation rentals, and in particular, finding out what people who go to vacation rentals who really, really love to cook would love to have to, or would love to see in the cupboards and on the shelves. Rachel, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited about having you here today. I've got so much to talk to you about. Thank you so much for having me. I greatly appreciate being here, and I'm so happy you reached out to me. Oh. I would completely forgotten about that article, and then you reached out to me, and I was like, oh, Someone does read my stuff, so. <laughs> well, yes, this is a, this was an article in the Phoenix, what do we call it? The Phoenix New, New Times. Times. Yeah. Yes. Uh, an article called How to Bake in Your Vacation Rental. And I was just totally taken by this because it, there was so much great information in it about what we should be doing as owners to to create great kitchens for our guests. But first of all, Rachel, I want I want you to tell us a bit about yourself because I've been looking at your about me page on croissant in the city and how can you have packed so much into your life so far i don't sleep very much um (laughs) but i figure if martha stewart can only sleep for five hours a night that i can do it on four so we'll, we'll i'll make it happen um yeah i am from pennsylvania originally i went to penn state and got a degree in print and photojournalism went and interned at the pentagon and decided that i didn't really want to work in pr or government work like i had originally thought and i moved to phoenix to help out my brother with his uh, business that he was getting off the ground and i decided that i was gonna go to culinary school because i was gonna be a food writer and i landed in the kitchen of thomas keller and i never wanted to leave so I've been doing food writing and starting my own pastry business and trying to travel in between. So ha- hence, I landed in a uh, vacation rental. That, that's fantastic. I, I just so, so much in there. Um, you missed out the one thing that um, d- just really hooked me. You said in your About Me page, aspiring cheesemaker and studying yes. cheesemaking in Vermont. Yes, so, love that. Yeah, I, I'm an absolute cheese lover. Uh, we were just talking before the show, before we started the recording, and I said that uh, it's the one thing I really, really miss about England is being able to go and buy wonderful, wonderful cheeses because they, they don't, certainly don't sell them in rural Ontario. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. And here, too, we have, you know, uh, we do have an issue with it. We, you can get a lot of chev here. Um, there are a lot of people with goats. As far as cheese, though, my friends own an amazing cheese shop called Wedge and Bottle here in town in uh, Phoenix. And so I usually head up, head over there. So luckily they let me order cheese because I there are some cheeses that they don't always get in, which is great. And for my wedding, we actually ordered, I don't know if you've ever had Rush Creek Reserve, but it is an amazing cheese. You basically cut the top off 
and it's just gooey cheese inside. So we ordered a bunch of those for our wedding, my husband and I, and we pretty much ate them ourselves, I believe. I've just written that one down. <laughs> it's delicious. Heavenly, heavenly if you can find it. Um, so it's an American cheese. I believe it's Uplands Cheese Company. So if you can get a hold of it, get a hold of it. It is delicious. Okay. Well, that's written down. It will go down <laughs> to the show notes because I know I have some listeners out there who also love cheese. So that one is one of my favorites. So yes, my favorite, my, my favorite is, is called Stinking Bishop. And I don't know if oh. I've ever come, come by Stinking Bishop before. I've seen it. I don't think I've ever tasted it, though. But I, I hope it is incredibly stinky with that name because the stinkier, the better, better in my book. So that's right. It's one of those cheeses where you have to get past the smell that, that, that before you get it to your mouth and just sort of hold your nose until it's in your mouth. <laughs> Amazing sounds, stuff. It sounds divine. And I will have to see if I can get that from Wedge. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so back to the back back to the article because um, it really did spark my interest. And you you described uh, um, a few must have items um, for you if you go to a, to 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 a self catering um, location. Just just stepping back a bit, what would you expect to find? Because um, you probably have a few things that you would love to have there, but what is it that you would you would expect to find as standard? You know, um, I think. In terms of just a kitchen, you know, pots, pans, sheet pans, bowls, you know, mixing bowls. Um, And I I think that people need to scale, obviously, to the size of the house. Now, the one that I stayed at, and I stayed in Duck Island, North Carolina. I believe it's North Carolina. Um, And, you know, they sized the the equipment in there well. There were tons of pots and pans, tons of, you know, um, they had... uh, Hotel pans, which are basically baking pans for the common kitchen, but larger. We use them in the commercial kitchen. They had a bunch of those. It made it a lot easier to be able to cook for that for the amount of people that we had in there. So I think that that's important is to scale your to your to your clientele. Um, I would love to see also, you know, liquid measuring cups, rolling pin, whisk, rubber spatulas, pastry brush, measuring spoons. Always the wine opener, guys. Always a wine opener. And then, you know, some nice cutting boards, too, because those are, you know, if you buy a nice quality product, they'll last. OK, let's let's go back to that, because you've mentioned two things there that um, that I, I know people have asked me about before. And one of one of them is is cutting boards. What what type of cutting boards should you get? I recommend um, if you're going to be doing this for your and this is what I buy for my own home. I go to the restaurant supply store. Now, there are a lot of restaurant supply stores. They're open to the public and they have great prices. They have quality products and those products are going to last you a long time. So there are some thicker white cutting boards that you can typically get at the um, restaurant supply store. They're probably about ten dollars, you know, and then at maybe at the end of the season, you take those cutting boards and you bleach them out. Typically, that's what we do in restaurants. We mix some bleach and water and we let them soak overnight and then we take them out the next day. We run them through the dish machine, dishwasher. We, we have a, a local um, restaurant supplies store and I've, I've often, I think I went in there once and I was bought to, just to buy a particular sized loaf tin, but I hadn't really mm-hmm. thought about, you know, using it for, for buying, you know, pots and pans and that sort of thing. But I, I guess it's, it's definitely worthwhile a look. Oh, yeah, I would I would say so. And, you know, if you go to even if you go to a larger box store, you're going to be paying probably higher prices than you would. And you're not getting the quality of product that you're going to get at a restaurant supply store. So I I just think it's a great opportunity, you know, a great place for you to be able to source some of those things, you know, sheet pans. You go to a store, you're going to buy a fancy sheet pan um, for twenty dollars. You can get the you know, the ones that will last. They're a little bit, you know, they're maybe not as durable, but they'll last you for quite a while. And they're going to be $5 at the restaurant supply store. That's a great tip, Rachel. Uh, That's what I'm definitely going to, uh, to, to follow. The other thing you just mentioned, and thank you for that tip about, um, about uh, cutting boards, because that's really useful too. Um, Wine openers. Wine openers. Yeah. There's some really fancy ones out there and there's some very, very simple you know, just the, just the original corkscrew. And there's all the fancy ones that, uh, that that come in nice little boxes. What about a recommendation for those? If you know your clientele is going to respect the things that are in that home, I think that you could buy probably a nicer one. I think the one that I really like are the ones that you, um, that you screw in that have the little um, arms that go up and then you push it down. They're very, very simple to use. Um, I know that sometimes when you use a wine key, which is just the one 
where you screw it in and then it has that little latch that you kind of hook onto the edge, edge of the bottle and you push up on it. I know some people have some issues with those ones. They're kind of a little bit more difficult if you haven't used those before, but the ones with the little arms that pop up, those are usually very easy to use. They're very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Definitely will be opening many bottles of wine. And I, and I think that most people will be able to, you know, master those pretty quickly. Excellent. Going back to pots and pans. Yes. Uh, I've, you know, I've, I've, been to countless vacation rentals and the one thing that really irks me is old um non-stick with the teflon just peeling off yes uh so what are your thoughts on non-stick versus good stainless steel i i think good stainless steel all the way i think that if you take care of it it, it will last you a lifetime I know that there are probably some vacation rentals where you go in there afterwards after people have left and you're like, I do not know what they were doing in here. And I don't think I want to know. Um, but hopefully for the most part, you can go, you know, you can maintain the, maintain your kitchenware as you go through, replace things that need to be replaced. The kitchen, the kitchen that we stayed at in North Carolina, you know, we go, we go into the kitchen and, you know, I was happy that they had stuff. I, I hated a little bit, the mismatchy stuff, all the stuff, which is fine. It worked perfectly. It was great for what we needed. Um, but you know, we go in to pick up coffee cups and inside they're all dirty. Mm -hmm. Like they're just stained dirty on the inside. And it was just kind of a little bit of a turnoff to me, you know, when we're paying so much money to stay in this beautiful, gorgeous house and little things like that. I think the devil is in the details and you go in and you're just kind of like, you know, that's kind of the gross, a little bit of the gross out factor. So I think just keeping an eye on that kind of stuff, you know, I know it's a lot to keep an eye on, but those little details, they add up so quickly and people, you know, even in the restaurants and how we serve desserts and pastries, those little details that a skew label, you know, people like things to look, you know, you want them to look nice for everybody. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think, uh, you know, the, the attention to detail is so important. Now, so often, of course, it's not the owners who are going to do the changeover at the end of the rental. It's uh, it's a caretaker or a cleaner. But of course, it uh, it is down to the owner to ensure that uh, that that caretaker or cleaner has the checklist to ensure that uh, that they 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 do check those things in the cupboards. Because I know I've I've lifted out a plate from my own vacation rental cupboard because we do check every plate in the cupboard and every glass between rentals and find that people have just, you know, maybe it's kids, but they've, they've perhaps been told to do some washing up and they've just put everything back in the cupboard without washing them. And of course, yeah. you know, if that, if that happens in your own home, well, you, you know, you'll probably not be too happy with the kids, but uh, it's, it's not going to ruin your day, which it very, very well may do if you've paid a lot for a vacation there. Yeah. And, and, you know, you know, if it's at home and it's your kids, it's your family, but you go in there and you don't know who was in the house before you, it, it has that little, you know, it probably isn't a huge deal, but it's that little gross out factor, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So I want to talk a bit about the, um, the, the article and you'd put some tips for the baker in a rental beach house kitchen. Yes. Um, so I just want to go through each one and just get your, your comments, a little bit of your take on, you know, what your thinking was behind them. And the first one was find out what equipment the rental has, if you can. Do, would, would you expect to see a sort of inventory of a kitchen or would you, um, you know, would you ask for one? Depending on who's going in there, if they're going to be doing a lot of cooking, they would, I would like to see one. Um, and I had asked, you know, um, it wasn't my husband and I who had booked the vacation rental that we went to. It was his aunt and uncle. And so I kept kind of pestering everybody. And I was like, can you find out if they have a KitchenAid mixer? Can you find out, you know, if they have this, that or the other? And nobody seemed to be able to find out exactly what was in the kitchen, which, the, you know, that's fine. So we just I kind of assumed that they didn't have anything. And so I packed some of the stuff with me. Obviously, I couldn't put my KitchenAid in there, but you know, I can do stuff by hand. And as you saw in some of those comments, you know, hands, your hands are a good tool to have <laughs> in the kitchen. Sometimes I think that asking is a great idea. I would love if, if you have a really nice kitchen and that's one of your selling features and you're selling a gourmet kitchen along with your rental, I would love to see, be able to see a list. So I know what or what not to bring with me. That's a great point. I, I went to a vacation rental a bit earlier this, uh, this winter, uh, in the Bahamas. I, I did expect because I was flying in to to find things like a blender, a mixer, um, you know, th th things that would make my life a little bit easier, allow me to cook as I would do at home on vacation. Right. 
And in fact, it was, and, and I should have asked, I should have asked that question before I went because there was no blender, there was no mixer, there was no whisk. Um, right. It, it was, it was pretty, pretty Spartan actually. But, uh, but that's, that, that's a great point. And I think, I think owners should be, if, if they are talking about their gourmet kitchens, which, which gourmet kitchen seems to be the buzzword for vacation rentals at the moment, is uh, yes. you know, um, back it up with, uh, with the evidence that you can send your guests. True. I mean, very true. And I, you know, I, you know, I asked and we didn't really get any, rep- and I don't know if they had actually called the rental company and, f- and to find out, but I, I just went online a little bit ago. My husband and I are looking to do maybe a rental over in California or um, Oregon coast area. And I'm going on and I'm seeing like gourmet kitchen, gourmet kitchen. And so I went and clicked on a couple of them and I was like, that doesn't look so gourmet to me. Maybe I don't know. You know, so I think if you're going to, if definitely if you're going to do it, I think, you know, we all have different interpretations of what a gourmet kitchen is. Um, but yeah, if you're going to, if you're going to tout that as one of your selling points, then I think you should definitely be able to have a list of, you know, we have a kitchen aid, we have a blender, we have a food processor, you know, whatever it is that is in there. And, and maybe ask your guests what other suggestions they would have too. That's, it all depends on what people are going to be cooking. You know, we went to North Carolina and I was like, I want to cook seafood. You know, I want to, the stuff that I don't have here in Arizona, the stuff that I can't readily get. Mm-hmm. And I would love to have been able to kind of do some more of that kind of stuff there. Yes, I guess if you go somewhere where your guests are going to go out and, and, and buy lobster, then you mm-hmm. should have the appropriate equipment to cut the shells. Yeah, and I think this is an awesome opportunity. If I were going to have a rental house like this, I would definitely um, put together a list of like great farmer's markets. You know, Joe down the way, he has a great seafood place. Go in there and pick up seafood if you guys are going to have a, you know, a barbecue or different things like that, you know, pull those interesting things. That is a great selling point to me. That is something that would make me want to come there because I want to go and I want to see all those great products that you have available that I can't get where I'm at. And I want to be able to use those when I'm cooking. And I think it's, it's important to, to remember, of course, that when, when people come to a self catering uh, location, so that a vacation home is of its nature, self catering, unless, unless there are a, a a zillion restaurants around, then then people are going to cook and they are going to want to buy the food to cook with. So you're you're absolutely right. I know if if I go somewhere, the first thing I want to know is is there a farmer's market? Um, right. Um. Is there a cheese shop? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs a good cheese and wine shop. <laughs> absolutely. In in the tips as well. So you're you're actually talking tips for. For, for rental guests here, you're saying pack some essentials and you said a digital scale, measuring cups and spoons, thermometer, microplane, baking pan, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll, I'll put a link to this article at the end of the show notes so you can take, um, take a look. Um, owners should perhaps be reading this and thinking, I haven't got that. I haven't got a digital scale or I ha- never thought of putting parchment paper in. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. We will be providing a, a list of uh, of really the you know the the essentials for a kitchen. But uh, I, I was interested that you'd you'd mentioned parchment paper because most people will p- provide stuff like foil and cling film, but mm-hmm. uh, but parchment paper may not be um, on their list. So that that's definitely something I'm making sure that I'm putting in my place. I think it's just a nice, if someone's going to bake, it's very nice to have. But also, even if you're doing, you know, if you're roasting something off in the oven, yeah, you could use aluminum foil, but you could use parchment too. I think it just, I think it's a good thing to have in there. Um, I think it's one of those things where you'd get there and you'd be like, or I would get there personally and I would be like, I'm going to bake, you know, I don't have any parchment paper. And I saw it there and I'd be like, oh, they thought of everything. Just like you said at the beginning, you know. You know, you, you didn't want for anything there. Everything was right there at your fingertips. And, and obviously you can't think of every single minute detail that someone might want. But I just think it's a nice a nice little extra thing. And, it you know, parchment paper isn't that expensive. You're absolutely so. right. Now I'm going from the sublime to the ridiculous now because I, I'm I'm looking at the, the comment that was uh, that was left on the the article. And it just says abalone, abalone Bay. Now yes. I know I do know of the owner of that particular property, and and I know that uh, that if if somebody wanted something in her vacation rental home, she would be she would move heaven and earth 
to provide it. And it was very interesting that she says in that comment, I also wonder, could a baker survive with an excellent hand mixer or must it be a mixer on a stand? And I'd love to hear your take on that because, you know, I don't have a mixer in my vacation homes. I've just got hand mixers. I think a hand mixer is perfectly fine. Um, You know, I didn't, I honestly didn't need the mixer. I may do without it. Um, but if you want, you know, if you want to give that extra, I think a hand mixer is perfectly fine and they're very reasonably priced. So they're very simple to put in there. That's great. So if somebody wants to make a batch of cookies, make a cake, they can easily cream the butter and sugar together. I made cinnamon rolls. Um, typically you would use a stand mixer for that and you would need it to use the dough hook. But you know what? I learned the old school way using, you know, kneading with my hands and it was an excellent arm workout for me. So no complaints there. That was totally fine. Um, yeah, but a hand mixer, great, great object to put in there um, and very reasonably priced. But if if somebody is advertising gourmet kitchen or chef's paradise is something I see a lot. Um, Stand mixer, you got to do it. Food processor, blender, you know, I don't. Again, I think that if you're advertising those and you're you're assuming that your clientele is going to be attracted to that, that you, I would hope that there would not be a problem um, with anybody walking off with things. And I, I honestly, you know, I don't have my own rental, so I don't know how, if, if it, if there is a nervousness there to leave nice items like that in there, I'm not sure. I I think though, that if you are advertising that you need to have those kinds of items. Yeah. I I don't think people do worry, or maybe they do at the very outset of, of going into this industry. They, they think, well, they, they get this idea that people might walk off with stuff, but it, it happens so rarely. And of course, yeah. you always know because you check between rentals. So it's, it's right. <laughs> you, right. So you just charge them. <laughs> that, that's right. But uh, but I think, you you know, you've you've hit the nail on the head with, you know, if, if you are if you're advertising gourmet or chef's paradise or whatever, then you've got to back it up with the with the goods. Yes. And I think also chef knives. Get some good chef knives. They are not incredibly expensive. You can buy, you know, you you don't have to buy the top of the line chef knives. You can buy some decent knives and then keep them sharp. You know, I'm not saying sharpen them after each guest, you you know, leaves. But at least, you know, every like six months, go in and, you know, take them out, get them sharpened, put them back in there. Because that is such a, like, you should have seen me trying to cut, help cut onions and different things for our feast that we kept that we were having every night and it was just kind of ridiculous on these flimsy little cutting boards with like dull knives so it's such a huge it, it's such a simple thing and yet such a huge benefit i think and i think uh, that the knife issue is is one that you know i i recall going back you know 20 odd years and vacationing in england at uh, at rental places and and it was just a standing joke about the knives you could, that they were all dull that's <laughs> that's absolutely right so <laughs> On the, on that topic of knives, that there's just to, to the to the layperson going out to buy knives, there is such a huge array of them, and even the ones that um, that you think are you know the best names, like you know, well for me I, Henkels I guess, but they come in you you can buy them off the shelf, you can buy them in Walmart, and then you can go into a store and they're they're locked away in a in a un, behind a glass case and they're twice the price, yeah, three times the price or four, so. Where where do we go to buy knives? If it is all if it is at all possible, I would try to find a small knife shop. Um, and a lot of you know a lot of the larger cities are going to have them. A lot of the smaller cities may not obviously have those. Um, but you don't have to spend a ton of money to get some not to get nice knives. And I would go into go in somewhere where you can ask someone's opinion, even if you know. You can go into a high-end store like Williams Sonoma, and they ha- usually have somebody there who knows about the knives. Go talk to somebody and see what they recommend. Um, I use Japanese knives; they're probably about one hundred and twenty dollars a piece. Um, if that's a little out of the price range, you don't want to be using something like that. You can easily get like a block of knives for a very reasonable price. And again, if you treat these properly, they will last you for many, many years. You know, you will invest a lot up front, but you will you will see the return if you're going to buy a whole block of knives. If you're just going to buy a couple chef knives, you can get some nice chef knives for like 50 bucks. And if you do have a knife shop, I would recommend going in there, explaining to them what you're trying to buy, give them your budget, and they will typically be able to show you a knife that is in your price range and and explain to you how to keep it nice and when to bring it in to sharpen it, et cetera. Okay, that great, great point. Because, you know, as I, as I say, it was it, it, 
that standing joke about the knives, and I think every <laughs> every property should have at least one knife that um, that you're able to cut a t- soft tomato with. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, can I just you know talking food now? I just wanted to touch on things like herbs and spices because. Every every vacation rental I go to has some herbs and spices, but you never know how long they've been there. If they've been there for the last three years, and and never or, or just right. topped up every time, you know, topped up with fresh stuff on top of the old. What yes. what what would you suggest that people do? Because you know we we do want to to supply these things so that so that our guests are not having to go out and buy the full range of of herbs and spices. Um. But also, we want to make sure that what we're offering is is fresh. Exactly. Um, there are some great online stores that you can go to. Uh, the one that I actually purchase for my business is called Mount Hope Wholesale. And I'll give you a link to that that you can put at the bottom. But they do free shipping with gra- with a, every ground order. It's a minimum of $50. And you buy them in bulk, essentially. So you would have to get, you know, you could get like mason jars or some kind of little container to put all these in and label them. But you're getting you're saving a lot of money and you're getting the freshest product Um, so you can restock them. You know, every year is typically, I think, what they tell you to. And we go through so much spices that we're restocking pretty much like every other week on them. But you're not going to probably go through that. Um, I would say, you know, I'll, I'll provide you with a list, but, you know, just some basic stuff, black peppercorns. And if you can possibly grab a pepper mill, you know, they're not super expensive. They're great to have. I love there's nothing like, you know cooking up that fabulous seafood and being able to do a little fresh cracked black pepper on there. Um, cinnamon and uh, ginger, salt, of course, kosher salt, oregano, paprika. I mean, there's probably about like 20 some basic spices that I would definitely have on hand. And I would, I would say potentially go to one of these wholesalers, set up an account and be able to kind of bring those in if you need to put in an order for some, you notice stuff's out. It's very easy to get a hold of it. You're not going to the store and you're not paying like crazy, mm-hmm. crazy prices for those little bottles that, you know, again, you don't even know how long it's been on the, on the thing there. Whereas these guys are moving so much product that, you know, you're getting the freshest thing. Excellent advice. Thank you. And, uh, and you're going to let me have a list of those, uh, yes. those that, that you think would be essential for uh, for a homeowner to have that's fantastic so we've talked a little bit about what you would what you would do if you're going to equip your own vacation home um so so what would be your let's say what would be your top four or five priorities in a kitchen if you were equipping your own vacation home to rent out definitely um i would do a kitchen aid mixer because if i were going to do it i would probably be um doing the gourmet kitchen so KitchenAid mixer, um, probably a food processor and a blender. I think those are, you know, huge essential items to have. I would probably have some muffin tins, tart pan, loaf pan, you know, just some stuff. Even if you go, I mean, the restaurant supply store is great. If you can find some, you know, find some at a cheaper price, but just make sure that they're, you know, even if they're used or anything like that, as long as they look good and they're in good shape, I don't think there's anything wrong with using that kind of stuff. Just make sure that they're, you know, that they're clean and they look nice and that they're going to last. Um, I would also do, and and like you said, a lot of people already do this, the, the aluminum foil and cleaning wrap. And you can get huge, you can get the restaurant, you know, the big ones. You can get those at Costco or the restaurant supply store. Those are nice to have. They last a long time. I don't know who's going through that much cling wrap. Um, so that, that would be great. You buy them maybe once a year and have them in there and it's a perfect, it's perfect. Um, yeah. Thermometer, pan spray, towels, kitchen towels, I think are huge. Excellent. I, you, you just mentioned, um, thermometer. And yes. Is that, that's something I hadn't had down at, at one of my properties and somebody mentioned it would have been very nice to have, um, around Christmas time. Oh, um, making candy maybe. Yeah. So what, what's, and, and then I went out looking for one and I was just got the hit with this array of different types of thermometers. You know, there were, there were the sort of the digital ones and the more manual things. So what's your recommendation on a, on a good thermometer? I have a lovely digital one and I'm very happy to uh, write the brand down and send it to you too, to put on, on the end of the post. Um, so that everybody can see what I'm using. And I use it for, I make caramels. I use it for all different kinds of stuff. I have one at home, the same brand. 
and I use it at home to temp my meats because I do most of my meats by temperature. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to just be able to pop it into your roast, temp your roast. Um, and it's digital. It has a nice big screen that lights up on it and it's easily to, it's easy to sanitize it. I would not put it through the dishwasher and I would definitely leave a note for your rental guests to please not put that through the dishwasher. Although I think most of them will figure it out. Um, Hopefully. <laughs> Amazing what people do put through the dishwasher, actually. <laughs> it is it is very scary sometimes. I won't lie to you. Even in the restaurants, I'm a little surprised sometimes at what they try to put through the dishwasher. Um, you know, cast iron skillets. No, no, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, you know, I definitely think that's a nice thing. You know, I paid $23 for it. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's great. I have one at work, one at home, and I use them all the time. They're amazing. So it's very inexpensive thing to do to buy. And then you just make sure um, you can change the batteries out in them. Granted, no one puts them through the dishwasher. You should be able to just, put, you know, pop a new battery in every once in a while and they'll be good to go. So, yes, yeah, send me that link and it, uh, it will go in the in the show notes. And, uh, and then I will probably go out and buy that, too. Um, so you've equipped your own vacation home with all this wonderful stuff. What is the best thing? You, you know, we, we all love reviews. You know, we, we're always looking for that absolutely amazing review. What would you want your guests to say about your place and your gourmet kitchen? I would hope that they um, would send me pictures, first of all, of what they cooked in the kitchen, because I just think that that would be great. Um, but hopefully that, you know, they were able to come and relax and that they got to get a good taste of where my vacation home was at. I think that food, at least for me and my husband, we travel on our stomachs and I hope more, I hope a lot of people do too. Um, and we want to go and experience and cook and just, you know, relax and have a great time. And our lives are so chaotic and crazy that to be able to just cook dinner and not have to worry that I have paperwork or someone's at the door, any of that kind of stuff, we can just, you know, enjoy and have a great meal and talk. That is such a huge compliment. I would, I would want that on every single one of them, you know, and hope that it's that relaxing for people. Well, I do hope one day, Rachel, that you do buy a vacation home and you, you do have a, a wonderful <laughs> kitchen because I think, I think you'd have a ton of people beating their way to your door. Excellent. I would love that. <laughs> Okay. It's uh, Rachel. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. You've um, you've given us a lot of food for thought, a lot of great information, and of course, you know, I'll, I'll put uh, put all this in the show notes so that if anybody wants to review their kitchens in their vacation rental properties, then um, then then perhaps you'll take a look at these lists and uh, and take away and you know get a takeaway from it. <laughs> Yeah. There's a few good puns in there. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I wish everybody great success in their kitchens and I hope that I hope this helped and I hope that, you know, I hope you get a lot of people who enjoy beautiful meals in your kitchens. And you know, Rachel, if you're looking at going to California or Oregon, then yes. I, I think you should take a look at Donna's um Sea Ranch Abalone Bay. Ooh, okay, I will. I definitely you know, will. The, the link is on that comment after your article, so go take a look because I don't think you'd be disappointed. I don't think so either. And since she was so sweet to offer to get go, run out and get me a microplane, I, I definitely feel like I would be in good hands there. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, if you go stay there, you let me know. I definitely will. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you, Rachel. That was just wonderful. Not only the discussion about food, but also to hear from you as a vacation rental guest, because it's it's something we don't often get the opportunity to do. I mean, we have uh, reviews and testimonials, and so the reviews that go on a website uh, or on TripAdvisor or on HomeAway or Airbnb, but we rarely get that opportunity to actually talk to a real guest and and find out exactly what their experience was. So it's uh, it's always a good thing to do that. And I'm hoping that uh, over the next couple of months, we'll we'll get to interview a, a few more rental guests. So on that on that topic, I'd really love to hear from you to um, to find out if if we're getting the right balance here of uh, of topics and interviews and if there's anything else that you'd really like me to um to talk about as 
Rachel mentioned she's uh, she's got a list of all the things that she would like to have in a kitchen. And you can download that complete list, plus a few other tips that Rachel's given. If you go to cottageblogger.com and, and check out the show notes for this episode. And it really is a great list because she covers off all the things like, you know, all the equipment, um, the, the little items that she'd like to see as, as well as, um, the sort of food, the herbs and spices. And she's got quite a list of the sorts of spices and herbs that would really make her stay at a vacation rental really memorable. So head on over to cottageblogger.com and, uh, and download that, uh, list. So moving to the end of the show now, and thank you once again for listening. I mean, we're heading off to the Cottage Show this weekend in Toronto, which I'm really looking forward to uh, as the, uh, the the weather looks just right for, for this type of show. It's going to be cool enough to stop people wanting to go out in their gardens, but it's going to be bright enough to get them out of the house. So where else to go, but go to a, go to a good show that, that is talking summer and getting people thinking about about the better half of the year after this long, long winter. I hope you've enjoyed this show. I hope you go and get that download and I'll look forward to being with you again very, very soon. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business.